A beginning is a very delicate time. Know then that in the year 1984, David Lynch released Dune. How many people here have seen Dune? Yeah, okay. How many people here have seen Twin Peaks The Return? Some of it. Wow, okay, all right. No spoil. well, there is one mild spoiler, but okay. Anyway, uh, so I want to talk to you tonight about Dune. I want to talk to you specifically about the marketing and the merchandising of Dune because it was insane how this movie was marketed. Uh, but first, I want to give you a little bit of context. Dune was based on the novel that was released in 1965 by Frank Herbert. Now, to explain D Dune, the story, and what goes on in it is an undertaking in and of itself. So I'm totally going to cheat here and just read straight from Wikipedia as to what it's about. <laughs> Set in the distant future amidst a feudal interstellar society in which noble houses in control of individual planets owe allegiance to the Padishah Emperor, Dune tells the story of young Paul Atreides, whose noble family accepts the stewardship of the desert planet Arrakis. As this planet is the only source of the spice melange, the most important and valuable substance in the universe, Control of Arrakis is a coveted and dangerous undertaking. The story explores the multi-layered interactions of politics, religion, ecology, technology, and human emotion as the forces of the Empire confront each other in a struggle for the control of Arrakis and its spice. Everybody got that? I mean, holy shit. Okay, so that's, that's kind of just a little bit about what the, what, that's the basic like, tenet of what the book is about. A lot of people feel the novel is kind of impenetrable and unfilmable, and a lot of people are right. Uh, you know, I, I will say in full, full disclosure, I have never read the book of Dune because I'm not that smart and the book makes me feel very dumb. Uh, I did, however, uh, read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the book, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and I feel that movie is garbage. That's another talk for another night, but right now I want to talk about uh, Dune and specifically when it was how it came to the screen. Uh, this is a movie that had been in production for a very long time, as early as the uh, early 1970s. Filmmaker Alejandro uh, Jodorowsky, who made El Topo and other like cult movies, he was trying to get it done. There's a whole documentary called Jodorowsky, Jodorowsky's Dune, I always mispronounce that, uh, that is specifically about his vision of bringing this to screen. And what's interesting about that kind of failed version of Dune is that he had a lot of people in it, like everyone from Mick Jagger to Orson Welles was in it. <laughs> so had that been made, it would have been pretty insane, but still I don't think as insane as the Dune we wound up with. But uh, what is interesting is people like H.R. Geiger and D uh, Dan O'Bannon worked on Dune, and in a lot of ways this abandoned Dune project led to Alien, because a lot of people who worked on the, uh, the abandoned Dune film wound up making Alien. Uh, so the, the novel comes out, and it's one of those things kind of like The Hobbit or The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy that becomes a real cult sensation, and a lot of people learn about it through word of mouth. Uh, so in, in the, the, the late 60s, throughout the 80s, Dune is one of those novels that's just passed around from friend to friend. And uh, in 1984, in anticipation of the film coming out, the folks at National Lampoon release a, uh, a novel that's a very, very... Uh, esoteric parody novel of Dune called Dune, D-O-O-N, written by Ellis Weiner, who uh, is probably most notorious for writing the, believe it or not, very good novelization for the movie Howard the Duck. Yeah, so he's, it's actually a great novel. Who would have guessed? Okay, so in 1984, on December 14th, David Lynch's Dune is released. Now you see all that text on the movie poster, right? That reads, in a world where sandworms 1,000 feet long guard creation's greatest treasure, the spice that prolongs life and enables the mind to fold space in slow time, where a prophecy will be fulfilled and a young leader with incredible powers will emerge to command an army of five million warriors in the final battle for country, control of a universe and the source of its ultimate power, the planet called Dune. So again, we have a problem here. <laughs> the problem is that Dune should have never been one film because there's so much that goes on in it that they're trying to fill in it in a, basically a two and a half hour running time. That's very, very difficult to do. Uh, so the movie comes out and immediately critics are just savage towards it. Uh, Janet Maslin, who is a famous film critic, her, 
one of my favorite reviews of all time. She says, several of the characters in Dune are psychic, which puts them in the unique position of being able to understand what goes on in the movie. Because the movie is confusing as hell. If you haven't read the book, if you have read the book, people who've read the book are like, oh, I don't know what the fuck's going on in this movie. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot that's confusing so uh, David Lynch himself was like, he does an amazing job on the movie. The movie is, I, I want to say this up front, the movie is very much worth seeing because visually it is stunning. The production values are unmatched. The acting, like it was his first collaboration with Kyle MacLachlan and we all know how that turned out. So yeah, like Dune is, is great for a lot of reasons. But as a, as a kind of cohesive narrative, not so much, which again, that kind of is Lynch's trademark these days, so great. Uh, but the folks at Universal Studios, when they heard that Doom was coming out, they thought Star Wars is over. We have the opportunity here to have the next Star Wars. Now, a similar thing happened in 1979 when Alien came out. Everyone thought Alien was gonna be this fun, you know, movie that was coming out for kids. <laughs> Hasbro, very infamously, Hasbro released an alien figure that was like 12 inches tall and they created like a toy line for it and it terrified kids. There's a, there's a commercial on YouTube that's amazing of these kids running around like it's a Star Wars figure playing with the alien. It's nuts. The point is like this is a, Dune is an adult science fiction movie. It is not for kids whatsoever. That did not stop people from merchandising the hell out of it. So, uh, Dune comes to the theaters, right? And the universal marketing executives know that Dune is gonna be a hard sell. They know that it's gonna be a very confusing film. So what do they do? They give audience members a dictionary. <laughs> of all the terms in the movie they're gonna see, they're like, you are on your own. You don't, you know, it's like, if you have to go to see a movie and read cliff notes beforehand when you're getting your popcorn, trouble is ahead so okay many of you may not know exactly why dune isn't like a kids movie so i want to show you real briefly i don't know if the sound's going to work on this or not and if it doesn't it doesn't matter just watch the visuals and you'll get an idea of what's happening <laughs> Okay, you can't hear. He's saying, you're so beautiful, my Baron. I love your diseases. Your diseases are love. As he's basically puncturing his zits. I don't know why this isn't playing. Okay, so they're about to kiss. Uh, these guys are basically, they're the Harkonians. They're evil. They're basically space Trump. That's what you need to know right there. Okay, and then he ushers in like this young uh, weird eunuch who he's going to rip his heart plug out and kill him for no reason whatsoever, other than he's evil. But you saw his like gnarly face pustules and everything. Not a movie for kids. Not a feel good fun. There's no E.T. phoning home. There's no Luke taking off Vader's helmet. Tell your sister I, you know, you were right. There's no redemption. It's just weird shit. And it goes on for two and a half hours. Nevertheless, all these companies had merchandising agreements. <laughs> this movie has so much nightmare imagery, it makes Eraserhead look like Barney the Dinosaur. So, but that doesn't, it doesn't matter. They have, uh, you know, just, just a few samples. You have Dune bed sheets and pillowcases. The Dune comic book adaptation from Marvel Comics, which is actually, if you're into either the movie or comic book ad adaptations or just weird comics in general, the art is fantastic in this, and it does a better job at telling the story of Dune than the actual film does. In, uh, in Germany here, we had, uh, we had some Dune puffy stickers. In England, because math is so much fun, they released... <laughs> A kind of case that would have you like your protractor and your compass and everything. They would have that. Atari tried to make a Dune video game, but they realized midway through that A, the video game market was crashing, and B, no kids were going to want to play a Dune video game. So that was never actually released. But we also have like Dune pencil cases, Dune pajamas, and of course the Dune Viewmaster. The interesting thing <laughs> about all this Dune merchandise that I'm about to get into is you can pretty much get most of it still pretty cheaply because Dune has never really gotten its due either as a cult movie or as like this, this fan phenomenon, which is kind of a shame because it is a fascinating movie. 
So LJN Toys, who other, whose other big license for 1984 was the Karate Kid, they released a whole line of Dune figures. Now, once again, this is Baron Harkonnen. He's the guy, he, you can't really see in this picture, but he has little zits on his face. So, you know, he's the only action figure to have a clear soul uh, account. And, you know, there's a very, there's the sandworm, so you can get into the phallic imagery. And uh, these figures, they still go relatively cheaply. I have a Baron Harkonnen on my desk at home, because of course I do. Uh, and they didn't sell, like, most Dune merchandise. And it was, you know, it was sent to like the, the uh, 1985 equivalent of like the dollar store, you know, remaindered kitty cities and whatnot, because no one wanted this stuff. Then it gets, it gets a little bit more strange. Every slide's gonna get a little bit more strange. <laughs> Dune the party! <laughs> Your kids can have Dune parties, because who wouldn't want a Dune party, right? Am I right, folks? Uh, so you have party invitations, and you have, you know, hats and noisemakers that have the word dune on them as you blow them out. So a lot of fun there. Uh, I am in the midst of buying all this stuff on eBay because I am in fact going to have a dune party soon. <laughs> because I feel like you should have a dune party. Because why not? Uh, in 1990, they released <laughs> dune paper dolls long after the movie came and went. I don't know why. But these are specifically based on the movie because you see here the third guild navigator who looks like a giant deformed penis. More on him in a second. And uh, Baron Harkonnen again there, uh, you know, and you can dress these characters up. The most infamous Dune uh, bits of merchandise, the, this, the internet exploded about five years ago when people realized these were out into the world. So I don't want to spend too much time on them because they pretty much speak for themselves. There are Dune coloring books and coloring activity books. This is a time before there were adult coloring books. These are what adult coloring books should be. They're that insane. So here we have, uh, we're fat shaming the Big Baron. Then there's a line here, can you figure out what Reverend Mother Ramalo is saying? She's a character in the film. No, you can't, because nothing she does in the movie makes a lick of sense whatsoever. Here we have that delightfully spermy character, the third guild navigator, uh, third stage navigator, excuse me. And he's saying, this is cut off at the bottom of the screen, blend the extinction of Paul Atreides into your recipe and you will come with a meal to your liking. <laughs> what? I, okay. I will burn away the sickness, says the doctor. That is disgusting. But you can get a lot of use out of your like red and green uh, crowns with his pustules. And of course, Duke and <laughs> Duke Leto and Peter die. <laughs> Illustrate the dead characters of Dune, everybody. So the movie fails in theaters. The movie's merchandising fails. They figure, okay home video, we'll have a second chance. So they start to release uh, all of these standees that you could put on the counter of video stores to try to get attention for the movie. And of course, the film's most biggest star at the time was none other than Sting, nice. who here is wearing his infamous cod piece that he wears in the movie. So you're going into the video store to rent like Ferris Bueller's Day Off or something, and you're greeted with this. This is before anyone knew about the tantric sex and how he can go for hours. So this is just, it's Sting in his pure, most sexual, although he's not a sexual character in the movie, this is just, this is just something that exists in the world. Have fun with it. All right, so there's one thing about Dune that I love more than anything else, and that is, I'm gonna segue here, See this little baby angel right here? That's my pug, Miss Money Puggy. Let's hear from Miss Money Puggy, everybody. Yeah. Dune, for reasons best left to David Lynch's uh, imagination, includes a pug for no reason. <laughs> he just put a pug in the movie. Because pugs are cute and pugs should be in every movie. If the Star Wars prequel trilogy had Jar Jar running around with a pug, I'd be so forgiving of it. <laughs> But the best thing about Dune Pug, and there's a lot that's great about Dune Pug, is that Patrick Stewart, in a, a pre-Star Trek The Next Generation, he goes into battle after the character of Duke Leto is killed. Spoiler. Hold 
holding a gun in one hand and a pug in the other hand. Long live Duke Leto! And there he goes running with the pug. The pug does not die, I'm pleased to say. The pug lives. Doom Pug forever, everybody. Now, follow me on, at, on Twitter at Bionic Bigfoot and Sci-Fi Explosion. Go home, watch Dune. It's amazing. It's bullshit what David Lynch did with Audrey Horn at the end of Twin Peaks. Uh, and that's all I have tonight. Thank you guys so much. Go to nerdnight.com to find a Nerd Night event near you. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for our latest presentation.